Hello everybody and welcome to our series on 200 most important idioms in English language. This is the final lesson in our four lesson series on the topic. In this lesson, we shall help you learn common idioms through interesting pictorials, meanings, stories and example sentences. All the idioms covered in this video tutorial are hand-picked ones and are known to feature regularly in the English section of various competitive exams. So we hope that after you go through these lessons, you will be able to solve those questions confidently. So that you may bookmark and cover the idioms at your own pace, we have divided the entire content into small sections of 10 idioms each. The idioms to be covered in this section of our lesson are there on your screen. And yes, do watch the other three lessons in this series for a comprehensive coverage of the topic. The first idiom of the lesson is a bolt from the blue. This phrase derives from the idea that blue is the color of clear sky from which one does not expect any lightning to strike. If you get a bolt from the blue, it is totally unexpected. And so, this idiom means an unexpected shock. For instance, the news of his failure in the examination was a bolt from the blue as no one in his family was expecting it. Next is a broken reed. Well, in a reed instrument such as a flute, a reed is a thin strip of material which vibrates to produce a sound. When the reed breaks, the instrument becomes useless and cannot be depended upon. So figuratively, a broken reed is an expression used to refer to an unreliable or undependable person. You might use this phrase as in the following sentence. That man is a broken reed. Trust him at your own risk. A cry in the wilderness. The word wilderness in English means an uncultivated, uninhabited and inhospitable region. If you happen to be stuck in such a region, then howsoever much you might cry for help, no one is going to hear you or come to your rescue. Those cries for help will be a useless effort, which is what this idiom means. A cry in the wilderness denotes a useless effort. For example, when the workers' appeal to settle their grievances proved a cry in the wilderness, they decided to resort to strike. A mare's nest. This phrase is a tricky one because it has two unrelated meanings and there is little to connect them. The word mare refers to a female horse and as we know, mares do not make nests. The first meaning of the phrase relates to this very fact that finding a mare's nest is imagining that one has found something remarkable when in fact one has found nothing of the sort. So a mare's nest can denote an illusory discovery. For instance, a good number of innovations turn out to be a mare's nest on deeper probe. The second meaning which is more widespread today is that a mare's nest is a complex or confused situation, a muddle. An example would be the sentence, Your office desk is usually a mare's nest. A wild goose chase. Everybody knows how difficult it is to chase and catch a wild goose. So the phrase means a foolish and hopeless search in pursuit of something unattainable. For instance, their attempt to get back the stolen ring proved to be a wild goose chase. Next idiom is above board. 
This term is believed to have originated in the gaming community. If card players keep their hands above the table or board, they can be seen to be playing fairly. So the phrase above board can be used to describe something like a transaction which has been done in the open without dishonesty, concealment or fraud. An example sentence is Ram is an honest officer and all his dealings are above board. Next is the expression all thumbs. Imagine if all the fingers in your hand were thumbs. Your hand would not have the same flexibility and you would be so awkward in holding or handling things. So the idiom means to lack physical coordination, skill or grace. Another word for which is clumsy. A short and sweet example for this idiom is when it comes to dancing, he is all thumbs, probably because he keeps stepping on the foot of his partner. At loggerheads. This is an easy one. At loggerheads means in violent dispute or disagreement. An example sentence that illustrates this meaning is The neighbors were at loggerheads over the parking space for their cars. At one's wit's end. The word wit means intelligence. So the phrase at wit's end means at the limit of one's mental resources, drained of all ideas and utterly confused or frustrated. For instance, at his wit's end, he decided to take the help of his seniors for his project work. And the last one in this section is to beggar description. Well, this term alludes to the idea that words are insufficient to do justice to a particular thing. So, if something beggars description, it is beyond description. An example sentence would be, The Taj Mahal by the moonlight beggars description. In section 17 of this lesson, we shall cover the 10 idioms shown on your screen. A black sheep. This term was coined in the 18th century by someone to denote that a member of a group was an outcast and of less worth, supposedly because a black sheep's wool was sometimes of lower value because it could not be dyed. A black sheep therefore denotes a disreputable or unloved family member. Rajiv is considered the black sheep in this family as he is the only one unemployed in the entire family of well-settled intellectuals. Bring home the bacon. Now, bacon is a type of meat that you get from pigs. This expression is widely believed to come from an old game of catching a greased pig, a popular competition at country fairs, in which the winner was awarded the pig. Therefore, to bring home the bacon means to earn a living and provide the necessities of life. For instance, most people work because it enables them to bring home the bacon. In a related meaning, to bring home the bacon may also mean to achieve success, as illustrated in the following sentence. To bring home the bacon, you must work hard with full dedication. To burn the candle at both ends. Okay, this is a self-explanatory idiom. A candle that burns at both ends is doing double its job. So this idiom means to work very hard. For example, often students neglect their studies year long and start burning the candle at both ends during exams, thus spoiling their health. To call a spade a spade. If you are calling a spade a spade, you are making no attempt at hiding the truth. The idiom thus means to speak plainly and honestly 
without avoiding unpleasant or embarrassing issues. An example illustrating this meaning is, Let's call a spade a spade. She is a bad cook. Chew the cud. Well, this is an interesting phrase that transfers the appearance of a patiently ruminating cow, which seems to take forever chewing the cud, like literally, to a person who is lost deep in thought. So to chew the cud means to ponder over or think about something carefully and for a long time. An example sentence would be, He sat chewing the cud all evening. Cliffhanger A very commonly used term these days, to understand which you need to imagine a person who is literally hanging from a cliff. For a moment, you would be totally gripped as to what is going to happen next. Would he fall down or would he successfully reach the top? So a cliffhanger moment refers to a dramatic and exciting ending to an episode of a serial, leaving the audience in suspense and anxious not to miss the next episode. An example sentence that illustrates the meaning of this term is the movie had a real cliffhanger moment at the end, leaving the audience desperate to know what would be next. Next is close-fisted. Someone who is close-fisted will tightly hold on to money and will be very reluctant to give it out. That is to say, he will not let money go out of his hand by being close-fisted. Someone like Mr. Scrooge, a miser or a stingy person who is unwilling to spend money and is mean can be referred to as close-fisted. For instance, he is a close-fisted person, so don't expect any donations from him. A cock and bull story Regardless of the origin of this phrase, it's easy to memorize this meaning as the expression reeks of a feeling that cock and bull stories are not real. They are fanciful and absurd. A cock and bull story is an unbelievable and stupid gossip. An implausible story used as an explanation or excuse by someone. An example, he is a big liar. Now he is again telling a cock and bull story as an excuse for being late today. Next we have the idiom to cry wolf. The phrase comes from a very famous Aesop's fable, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, in which a young shepherd found it amusing to make villagers think a wolf is attacking his flock. When they came to his rescue, they learned of the false alarm. However, when a wolf actually came, the villagers disregarded the shepherd's calls for help and the wolf ate the flock. So from this story, the term cry wolf means to raise a false alarm. An example sentence is, don't pay heed to what he says. He is just crying wolf again. Die in harness. Well, the word harness in English means a set of straps and fittings by which a horse is fastened to a cart or plow, etc and is controlled by its driver. So this expression draws a comparison between a person at work and a horse in harness drawing a cart. To die in harness means to die while in service, that is, before retirement. For instance, most companies provide for insurance policies as perks for their employees in case they die in harness. We move on to section 18. The 10 idioms to be covered in this section are there on your screen. To drag one's feet. Well, literally this term means to walk slowly and wearily or with difficulty. Figuratively, this phrase is used as a metaphor for allowing one's feet to trail 
and to lag behind. When one is dragging one's feet, that person is being deliberately slow or reluctant to act in a particular situation. For instance, this incident, probably one like riots, calls for immediate intervention, but the authorities seem to be dragging their feet. Fair and square. You would be surprised to know that this square has nothing to do with geometry. In the 16th century, square meant fair and honest. So, fair and square is tautological or we can say repetitive. The phrase probably owns its long life to the fact that both words rhyme together. So, the phrase fair and square means honest and straightforward and it is especially used in the context of business dealings or games. For instance, we won the cricket match fair and square. Feet of clay. Well, we stand on our feet. So if the feet were made of clay, the base on which we stand would be very weak. So feet of clay refers to a fundamental flaw or weakness in a person otherwise revered. If you say that someone you admire has feet of clay, you mean that they have hidden faults. For instance, the media are always looking for a popular personality's feet of clay. To flog a dead horse, an easy one, it means to waste time trying to do something that will not succeed. An example sentence is, I think you are flogging a dead horse, trying to persuade Sita to marry you, as she loves someone else. From pillar to post. This phrase does not have any specific story attached to it. It's just a variant of some other phrases such as, from one place to another or from here to there. If someone runs from pillar to post, he moves from one place to another in an unceremonious or fruitless manner. For example, after his mother died, John was passed from pillar to post and ended up in a children's home. Go bananas! Another easy one. Well, monkeys and apes are closely associated with eating bananas. This phrase is an allusion to their behavior when they do so. To go bananas simply means to act crazy. For instance, I am sure she will go bananas when you tell her the news. To go Dutch. The phrase going Dutch probably originates from Dutch etiquette. In the Netherlands, it is not unusual for a couple to pay separately when dating. The Dutch were already internationally known as Scrooges and English rivalry with the Netherlands, especially during the period of the Anglo-Dutch wars, gave rise to several phrases including Dutch, like this one, that promote certain negative stereotypes. To go Dutch means to share the cost of something, especially a meal, equally. For instance, I and my friend always go Dutch when we eat out. Go for the jugular. Well, there is this vein in our necks known as the jugular vein. And this phrase refers to an attack intended to completely defeat and destroy one's opponent. Most particularly by attacking their vital weakness. It's just as if that person is trying to sever the jugular vein in the neck, which causes quick death. To go for the jugular means an attack intended to completely defeat and destroy one's opponent. For example, the winning team decided to go for the jugular in the last quarter of the match. Keep a level head. From the words level and head, we get a notion of balanced. Someone who keeps a level head is balanced in his head and is one who has a common sense 
and sound judgment. So to keep a level head means to be sensible. For instance, even in the middle of the crisis, he kept a level head. Leave somebody high and dry. It's a nautical phrase which means stranded without help or hope of recovery. This term originally referred to ships that were beached. The dry implies that not only were they out of the water but had been for some time and could be expected to remain so. So to leave someone high and dry means to leave someone helpless and unsupported. For instance, instead of keeping his promise of helping me with office work, he just left me. Coming to section 19 of this lesson, we shall cover the following 10 idioms as you can observe on your screen. To lead around by the nose. This phrase probably originates from the practice of leading horses by a bridle and bulls and bears by a ring through the nose. The nose is one of the most sensitive parts of an animal and a nose ring helps handlers to control powerful and potentially dangerous animals. So the idiom means to exercise complete control over or dominate totally. An example sentence is, at office, his boss leads him by the nose. Make a beeline for. This phrase alludes to the root of worker bees bringing nectar and pollen back to the hive. Bees always cover the shortest distance between two points. So the idiom means to go straight to or rush towards something. For instance, the day the product was launched, people made a beeline to purchase it. Make a mountain out of a molehill. This is another very common phrase in English. Talking about molehills vis-a-vis mountains, though the two shapes are similar, a molehill is quite small as compared to a mountain. So the phrase means, to exaggerate the importance of something trivial. Another similar phrase carrying the same meaning is to make much ado about nothing. An example sentence that illustrates the use of this idiom is Amit said to Rekha, this is a small issue, so don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Put one's foot down. Well, Think of it this way, when you put your foot down, you decide not to be moved. And that is what this idiom means. It means to take a firm stand, to be decisive or determined. For instance, to correct his son's excessive TV viewing habits, the father finally put his foot down and curtailed the TV viewing hours. The rank and file. Rank and file now refers to the ordinary members of any group, but it originated as a military term. The rows and columns of soldiers drawn up for drill and not including officers were called ranks and files. From that history, the term rank and file has now come to denote the common man. An example would be the sentence. It's a common fact that the rank and file of a constituency makes a politician win elections, not the elites. Queer someone's pitch. Well, the word queer in English means strange or odd. But about two centuries ago, the word queer was used as a synonym for ruin or spoil. So to queer someone's pitch means to spoil someone's plans or chances of doing something, especially secretly or maliciously. For example, he queered my pitch by asking for promotion before I did. And similar is the expression to upset the apple cart. It means 
to mess up or ruin something. An example would be, Ashima really upset the apple cart by telling her parents that she is getting married to a foreigner. Next idiom is to read between the lines. This term comes from cryptography wherein one quote reading every second line of a message gives a different meaning from that of the entire text. So if you need to decode the real or intended message, you need to literally read between the lines. The idiom thus means to perceive or detect a hidden meaning in something said or written. An example that illustrates this meaning is, though she does not say it explicitly, but reading between the lines, I would say that she is not happy with her married life. Rise with the lark. For this phrase, you just need to know that larks and crows are birds that start singing very early in the morning. So the idiom means to be awake and out of your bed early in the morning. And the last idiom in this section is a shot in the arm. This phrase literally denotes an injection of medicine. For example, the doctor administered the antidote to the snake bite by a shot in the arm. And just like an injection of medicine is supposed to revitalize you and make you feel better, this term figuratively stands for a boost or encouragement. For instance, a promise to waive loans against the ailing industries could provide a shot in the arm for their revitalization. And finally, we come to our last section and the 10 idioms to be covered in this part are there on your screen. A snake in the grass. The term a snake in the grass stands for a treacherous or deceitful person, especially one who feigns friendship. That is one who pretends to be your friend while secretly doing things to harm you. An example illustrating this meaning is His best friend turned out to be a snake in the grass by cheating him out of his business and properties. Stick one's neck out Well, this phrase probably originated from turtles. When a turtle sticks its neck and head out in the open, it becomes more vulnerable to predators. But a turtle must leave the safe haven of his shell to eat. So it will have to stick its neck out sometimes even though it entails some risk. Therefore the idiom means to make oneself vulnerable and to take a risk. For example, afraid to stick her neck out, she decided not to report the incident to the police. To bite the dust. This phrase can be used both for a person, in which case it means to die, and for an object when it fails or breaks or gives out. Examples are, the soldier was too young to bite the dust, which means die. And, my hair dryer bit the dust today. Now I will have to buy another one. This sentence means that my hair dryer stopped working. To build castles in thin air. We know that castles in thin air or castles floating in the sky are possible only in imagination. So this phrase means to daydream or to make plans that can never come true. For instance, the little girl sat in the garden all day long, building castles in thin air. To hang fire. This expression originally referred to the 17th century flintlock musket where the priming powder ignited but often failed to explode the main charge, a result called hanging fire. So to hang fire means 
to hesitate or delay doing something, especially making a decision. An example that shows how to use this idiom is, it's elections time and the government is hanging fire on the decision to increase the tax rates. To make both ends meet. This is again one expression that is very very common in English. It is assumed that the ends in this expression allude to the sum total of income and expenditure. So if one is able to balance income and expenditure, then one is making ends meet. This idiom means to manage somehow and to have just about enough money to pay for your basic expenses. An example sentence is, with mounting expenses, he decided to work extra shifts to make both ends meet. To make one's blood or flesh creep. This idiom alludes to the feeling of having something like probably an insect crawl over one's body or skin. Creepy, isn't it? So this idiom means to cause one to shudder with fear or disgust. Examples are the sight of a spider right in front of his nose made his flesh creep. The use of this idiom in this sentence suggests that he was afraid or filled with fear. And the account of the heinous crime made my blood creep. In this case, the idiom means that I felt uneasy and disgusted at the account of that crime. To nip in the bud, a self-explanatory one. We know that the bud is the initial stage from which a flower blooms later on. So if you nip it in the bud, you have suppressed it at the initial stage which is what this idiom means. An example, before the flower, negative tendencies must be nipped in the bud. Next, we have the idiom, under the weather. This expression means to be ill. The phrase presumably alludes to the influence of weather on one's health. An example sentence, I am going to stay at home because I am feeling under the weather today. However, the same term is sometimes used as a euphemism for being drunk. For instance, after seven drinks, honey was a bit under the weather. And our last idiom is water under the bridge. This phrase is akin to the expressions what's past cannot be undone or let bygones be bygones. The expression is often used in the form of the saying, a lot of water has flowed or passed or gone under the bridge. It refers to something that is over and gone, just like a running flow of water in a river that passes underneath a stationary bridge. The idiom water under the bridge is used to refer to events that are a matter of the past and consequently no longer to be regarded as important. For instance, she used to go out with one of her neighbors, but now she is married to someone else. As they say, a lot of water has passed under the bridge. So that completes this lesson. All the best for any exams that you might be preparing for. For a comprehensive coverage of this topic, do watch the other three lessons covering the rest of the 150 idioms. Hope you like this lesson. For any doubts or queries on this topic, please feel free to drop a comment on the video page. Alternatively, you may mail us your comments or feedback or any queries at aptispeak at the rate gmail.com. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.